It is definitely true that skill breeds confidence. I can talk from experience that just developing the knife, the edge, the blade, sharpening that edge continuously of my craft, of my art, of my performance skills, my personality as an artist has resulted in much more confidence. In the beginning, I wasn't really sure, although I was never really bad or anything that I sucked. I remember having a lot of doubts. Now, the more you hone in on your skills and you get better and you actually hear not just yourself saying something about that, but hearing the world around you say a lot of positive things about you and your voice and your art, your craft, which singing is both. It is, well, you're an athlete, you're an artist, and you're a craftsperson. It's all of that. But when people continuously started to compliment me about the same kind of things, and not just in a very generic kind of overall you know, general way, but very specific about my timbre, about the coloraturas, about the accuracy. That's one thing I always heard. Oh, you're so accurate and it's so exact on point. That really resulted in me believing more and more that that is true. Now, I want to talk a little bit about how you can go about addressing problems. I think The problem can be part of the solution, but only if you approach it the right way. Now, I never had huge, gigantic problems, but I remember the time when there was this thing of me not sounding great on the high pitches. I felt like it was strained and it did feel hard and it didn't sound completely like it's floating up there. And there were a few things I did not know. So the way to approach this is actually to really watch your language. If I had said, well, and back then I just did say that, I learned that in the meanwhile (laughs) that I don't approach it this way anymore. But what I said then was like, it just feels so bad. And what it makes you want to do is just avoid the whole thing. I don't want to sing that high C, it's strained, it's tense, it doesn't feel good. And afterwards, I don't, I just don't want to sing that. And so you kind of tend to avoid those things. You either avoid them or you will continue to not sound good and it's not going to feel good. And maybe you even feel strained and the next day your voice is worse or even worse than that. You have no voice left and it's very scratchy. In the language, in the knowledge about what creates the problem, in the description of the problem lies part of the solution or the beginning of the solution or the path toward a solution. So instead of saying, this feels bad, it sounds really bad when I do this, I can't do it. Change your language and your thinking to, well, right now there are some skills I don't have yet. What are the things I'm going to have to master in order to get rid of this problem? Meaning like it doesn't feel good and it doesn't sound good or I can't even do it or I don't don't even want to do it. What do I have to do? What do others do in order to do this? And well, you cannot compare your range to another one's range. So a high pitch for one person is not the same as a high pitch for the other person. So don't compare yourself exactly to someone else. So just really be clear about what your voice sounds like. What is your timbre? What are your tendencies, your natural sound? And what is your current range, your current range? So in order to improve your current range, what are the things you have to do? on the bottom, on the top, in the mix, in the transitions, in the registers and the passaggi, which there are more than one. Yes, there are definitely transitions in the voice that is more than just the main transition from your chest register to your head register. Even from your head to your whistle register, if you can do a whistle register, you're going to find another, it's almost like there's a hole in your voice. You're going to have to find a transition. Describe the problem as detailed as possible. So instead of me going and saying, you know what, that high pitch just feels bad and strained and I can't do it and it doesn't sound good. I have to ask myself, what is resulting in this? You know, like how is it affecting the outcome, what I do? What's the cause of it? So I'm going down my checklist now. Okay, do I prepare Am I physically ready to tackle this phrase or this pitch? A lot of times I will try out just to break down the phrase, to kind of break it down in little chunks. And that way I can kind of test out, is this little chunk the problem or this little chunk? Is it going from this to this pitch? Like which interval is the problem or is it the single pitch that's the problem? Or is it just going from 
the one that comes before to the one that is hard or going from the one that's hard to the next one? Is it the beginning or the end? Is it the onset or the offset? Is it because it's in the middle of something or is it because it's at the end of a phrase? Just kind of recognizing where does the problem begin and then asking myself, am I checking all the boxes? Am I physically getting ready? Am I supported? Does my posture allow me to breathe properly so that I can engage my core so I can support throughout? Am I dropping the ball in the middle of the phrase? Am I not continuously supporting or am I losing my support toward the end? Am I losing my posture? Am I giving in to collapsing? Am I losing the vertical space? Am I losing the openness as I hold a long pitch, for example? Or is it the pitch itself that it's not even doable right now? If you're looking for a way to help you stay on track when it comes to singing, whether it's technique, mindset, or motivation, in my online singing school, you will not only have access to all of my pre-created video courses, which includes more than 200 video lessons, but you'll also have access to an amazing community of like-minded people, singers from all over the world who love music. You will also have the opportunity to get personal feedback from me during our monthly group coaching session. You can dive into all of my courses like Music Theory for Singers, How to Sing Opera, Mastering Pop Ballads, The Vocal Warm-Ups Vault, The Vocal Troubleshooting Guide, Back to Basics, Perfect Beginnings, and more. Check out the link below and I hope to see you on the inside. Question number one. Is it possible to transpose so that right now with the current range I have, it can sound better? If not... How can I approach this as a longer term kind of project to where I can extend my range toward the top? A lot of things will need some time to settle into your voice. Your muscles have to develop and strengthen. Now, sometimes there are quick fixes. A lot of times when I talk to my students, it is a matter of maybe sometimes preparing, connecting the phrase and just thinking differently. I just talked this morning to a student of mine in my vocal mastery lab, and it was all about, he sang this high phrase toward the end of broken vow. And now that I'm found, and there's this high pitch. And that phrase is a problem because it lies high, it's intense, and that high pitch is a challenge. So first of all, I told him, you're going to have to prepare physically a lot more. You have to breathe even deeper. You have to really expand outward, take your time for that. And make sure your posture can support that kind of intensity. And the next thing you're going to have to do is approach it in a way that you don't just isolate the high pitch. A lot of times that happens. It's almost like it sticks out like a sore thumb, right? It's like, oh, this one is hard. And then everyone who listens can tell that you're really aiming just for that high hard pitch and it kind of sticks out. And what happens, you give it a little impulse. You give it a push, and sometimes that push is just enough for you to crack or to kind of flip over. Sometimes it's better to just connect. So in this case, I advise to like try out to not aim for the top pitch, but for the one after that, which means you keep your support and tension and all of that cohesiveness until it's over. You don't want to drop the ball too soon. So the approach and the explanation, just the description of what the problem actually is, contains part of the solution. So if I say I have a weak voice, that is not really anything constructive. But if I say I run out of air, it sounds breathy, it sounds unsupported, I'm not engaging my body. This is already part of the solution. You already described the solution. So shift your mindset to where you don't want to Critique critique means positive, right? You want to do a constructive criticism on your own singing. You want to change your overall attitude to your voice to where it is something positive and not constantly something you're struggling with. Now, while you want to expand your skills and everything you do with your voice, you want to be better with pitch control. You want to expand your range on the top, on the bottom and get better with transitions and do all registers in a strong way and have control. Reframe everything in a way to where it becomes something positive and something you can actually look forward to. Me personally, the journey is exciting. It's all about working on the things that you know are going to have a result in the end. There's nothing more frustrating than continuing to work on something that doesn't seem to yield any fruits. If it seems like you're constantly working hard, and you're singing, and you're straining, 
and nothing's really happening. Not much is changing in a good way. Maybe sometimes even you feel like you regress. Then you have to reframe this. You have to be more positive and identify the problem and then enjoy the process. I get really excited when I kind of have a plan for what I'm going to do for anything in life, really. I literally write down a plan for everything. If it's any bigger project that I can't just figure it out like on the spot, I'm making a plan. Now, I use an online tool called Notion, which I have used for a couple of years now, and I can't even imagine my life without it anymore. You can create tables and like, this is how I set all my goals and I like all the projects that I'm working on. I detail out my plan on how I'm going to get where I want to go. What are the next steps? What are the actions that I'm going to take? I do my research. And you know, my thing is, if anyone has ever done it, then you can probably too. If a human being can do it, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to learn it. So don't be discouraged. You just have to be more intentional and you just have to go about things the right way and describe the problem in the way that it'll present to you the solution already. Now, something that has helped me a lot in the past is to record myself. And you literally can just record yourself. And I have this really awesome Shure Move mic. What you do is you just take it out of the case. And I have two of them. There's also a set of one. You take it out. It's like an AirPod. You clip it on or you can use it as a handheld. I recently made a video about that. The link is in the description. And you can use this to record yourself on your phone. There's an app that comes with it. And you can record yourself and hear more details. It's all about working with a distance so that on the soft parts, you can hear more details. And on the loud parts, you get further away. I think this is so useful for, for recording yourself. Make a note. Record yourself. Give that file a name. And then check up on yourself because you're never going to truly know if you're progressing unless you have a reference. Just your memory isn't good enough because your memory will always trick you out. You actually want to compare yourself to what you sounded like six months ago, 12 months ago, two years ago. And that's how you can gauge progress or stagnation. Thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing.